Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm here in the Maktaba and I'm with Sheikh Omar al Jamaiki, who's a graduate from the Faculty of Hadith, Kuriyat al Hadith, uh, in the Islamic University of Medina. And uh, Sheikh Omar al Jamaiki is my, one, I guess, one of my first teachers. He graduated in 2001 and I went to the Jamia in 2002. Uh, and I still recall uh, studying Usul al uh from you. So inshallah, so what we're going to speak about today is going to be about the Islamic University of Medina, the faculty of Hadith and uh, st studying Hadith and methodology and the books of Hadith, how to build a Hadith library and anything else which comes up inshallah. So just to begin a general introduction, who is Sheikh Omar al Jamaiki, and al Jamaiki part as well, and just give us a brief background. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam rasulillah. As for concerning a, a brief uh, introduction regarding uh, myself, that uh, the name Omar Jamaiki and the word uh, Al Jamaiki or Jamaiki, that uh, it's because of uh, my origin is from Jamaica. So I was born and grew up uh, in Jamaica, then uh, at a certain point traveled to live in uh, Canada and also in the US to kind of somewhat to further my uh, education. Then after then uh, accepted Islam uh, when I was still like in uh, high school, secondary school back there. And then uh, soon after, then I went to uh, Medina University and completed my study there in uh, first studying concern in uh, they call uh, Mahd al Lugat al Arabiya, or Shoba, where we study concerning Arabic for two years. Then I moved on to Kulat al Hadith, where we studied there for uh, four years. Okay, excellent. Alhamdulillah. So your convert background, parents aren't Muslim and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the case. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so most of the uh, guests that have come onto the in the Maktaba series so far, they're all, I think all of them have been graduates of Sharia. Okay. So alhamdulillah, it's good that we've finally got around to getting a, inshallah, muhaddith, inshallah, or someone that studies hadith and knows hadith, uh, onto in the Maktaba, because I think it's obviously quite important. So just to give us an overview of, because we've spoken about Kul Sharia quite a lot, and right. you know, studying Usul al-Fiqh, or another studying Fiqh, uh, either Bidat al Mujtahid or now it's Rod al Murabit, for example, and the Hanbali Madhab. Tell us a bit about the curriculum in Kulit al Hadith and the subjects that you focus on the most, and maybe and what each subject really is as well, inshallah. Okay, concerning, concerning uh, Kulit al Hadith, concerning the main focus of their, but that, that particular faculty is related to a Hadith. So they put it concerning different, different sections. So you have concerning that uh, Hadith study by way of, uh, they call concerning Al Masad al Asliya. Masad al is concerning studying the, uh, the books that are said to be Musnada. So we have concerning Al Kutubu Sitta. So we didn't per se study each book from cover to cover, but we study an aspect of each of the Kutubu Sitta. Then uh, also, so that's concerning. Al Kutubu Sitta, for everyone that might not know. Yes, Al Kutubu Sitta would be concerning Asai Bukhari, Wasai Muslim, then we have uh, Abu Dawood, then we have At Tirmidhi, then we have Nasai, and also Ibn Majah. So those are said to be a Kutubu al Sitta. So Kulit al Hadith, because that's their area of speciality, is that uh, the Talib uh, would be familiar regarding those particular books. Uh, also concerning that Kulit al Hadith, we have also concerning that another aspect concerning the study of Hadith, we're concerning Ilm al Mustala. So, an important aspect regarding concerning to understand concerning Ilm al Hadith, that a person also needs to understand the language and the terminology of the Ulama of Hadith. So, that per se is captured in the books that are referred to as Ilm al Mustala. With a person to know concerning what is said to actually said to be hadith to sahih, what does this mean? What does this uh, the other matter that relates to hadith to sahih and also different different categories of hadith? So we'll go in cons uh, go in depth regarding study concerning ilm al, uh, al mustala and more uh, then also concerning that uh, a part of this also regarding concerning ilm al rijal. So a part of concerning studying hadith is also the ear regarding understanding concerning how does how does concerning the critiquing of the rijal concerning narrators of hadith. That's also another area that we study, and also we have concerning also uh, we study concerning which is ilm takhrij. We're concerning teaching the, the talib how to make takhrij of hadith, uh, and also in the sense of takhrij of hadith, where the the general concern, the aim and the goal is that the person able can uh, source those hadith from their original source, and also critique those hadith regarding being able can decide whether hadith is authentic or not. Not that everyone will achieve this. It takes concerning more uh, studies further study regarding uh, that particular year, but the general thing is uh, that we'll cover those particular year. Also another interesting topic that we study in uh, Kulit al-Hadith is concerning matters concerning Tadween al-Sunnah. 
and Qutb uh, al-Rijal. So you find that uh, no one concerned the history regarding concerning how Ilm al hadith and some how it started and how it developed. Mm. So we have concern that became that uh, area of study and also studying the books of hadith that we have uh, a, uh, a topic where we, go, where we study concerning the various types of books of hadith. So that's concerning of those things that is related to the study of Qutb al-Hadith. And also we do study, we said by way of what we call concerning Fiqh al-Hadith concerning how to extract the ahakam from hadith. So uh, during my time, we heard that uh, things somewhat have changed, that uh, in Kult al-Hadith, that uh, it was upon a talib to memorize a book called Al-Muharrar, uh, a book in hadith that uh, is like uh, Bulug al-Maram. Uh, but that book is concerned that it more follow the, tra the, the tradition of the Hanabila, as uh, Bulug al-Maram is more concerned of Ibn Hajar, is more concerned the way of the, the Shafi. Yeah. Nam, uh, so that's concerning, but uh, it's up. Uh, uh, it was why we were to memorize that book. Uh, how, many, how, how many hadith do you remember roughly? Uh, it's over uh, a thousand hadith. Over a thousand hadith. Uh, it's over a thousand hadith. Ahkam. It's just about ahkam. Yeah. So it's uh, less than uh, the hadith in uh, Bulug al Maram, but he went more in depth regarding matters relating to uh, the aqwal of the ulama pertaining to that particular hadith. Okay. So in that uh, sense, so they kind of somewhat chose that particular book and. Uh, concerning fiqh al-hadith, then uh, the book that we study, we study concerning that uh, uh, the book that is uh, then Nail Autar by Ashawakani, which also is like is a explanation of one of the books of the Hanabila by uh, Al-Majib bin Taymiyyah that is called Al-Muntaqa, that uh, is a book again concerning, uh, we call Qutb al-Ahadith al-Ahkam. So Majib bin Taymiyyah was the grandfather of Ibn Taymiyyah that he gathered these books or these ahadith that relates to Ahkam then that book was explained by Ashokani. So that's the book that we used to study as concerning fiqh al-hadith. Okay, Masha, that's a lot of information. So so, so there's the Masadir al-Asli, which is a six books of hadith, and then there's a hadith al-Ahkam, and from them you study two books, a book that you memorize a hadith, <laughs> al-Muharrar, and the book where you study the fiqh of the hadith as well, which is Nail al-Awtar, for the explanation of Imam Shokani on a book which is originally by Al-Muntaqa, you said by yeah, Al-Majd, which is the grandfather or the... Okay, just going into each of these topics just a little bit, okay. inshallah, because there's, 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 there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot and it's really interesting. And I think it's important <coughs> that students, especially students that want to apply for the Jamia, they know, okay, if I go to Hadith, this is what I'm going to Aywa. study. Uh, so one by one, let's look at first of all, Mustalah Hadith. Aywa. Mustalah Hadith, the principles of Hadith, you study whether, uh, how to categorize Hadith as being authentic or weak. <coughs> What's the book that they studied? And uh, tell me a bit about, you know, your, how many years did they study it? And, what, and how do you advise a student here? So two questions, how do you advise a student here who's going to begin his pursuit of knowledge of hadith? What book would he study as opposed to the one that you study there? So two questions, I guess. Okay, so, uh, all right, uh, start first. We'll start first concerning what he studied there. Yeah. Right, concerning, uh, you said that, you know, with hadith, he goes into, uh, hadith concerned that, you know, he goes into different, different science itself. So of the science concerning uh, al mustala or usul al-hadith, that uh, <coughs> that's concerned the person gonna somewhat uh, will study uh, the terminology of the ulama hadith. The book that was used then was concerned, the book that we call concerning Tadrib al-Rawi by as -Suyuti. So and now Rahimullah, which is concerning uh, the main book of hadith that uh, become like the main book of hadith uh, is a book written by Ibn Salah, Al-Muqaddimah Ibn Salah or Ma'rif ulum al-Hadith by Ibn Salah. So that book will come to the core book regarding the study of Ilm al-Hadith. So you have many of the ulama have looked at that book and they have made muqtasarat, they have, made, they have condensed that book amongst them and Nawawi. So now Rahimullah, that uh, he had a book concerning, that's called al taysir so, uh, and, another, and other books that he did. So he made a muqtasar and then a suyuti in the 9th century that he came and explained that book. Okay. And that book became one of the books. He said a very, it's a very thorough book. Yeah. Uh, we said that uh, suyuti Rahimullah was known that he was able to uh, gathered a quarter of the ulama on different on, on that uh, uh, on the topic, uh, so that was the book that we use concerning uh, in Kulut al Hadith as the main book regarding. With the other, like you know, book concerning the book of uh, uh, Nukat ibn Salah, that uh, but those books were the main books that we studied. You studied it over. Yes, that was covered over four years. Over so the main, the first three years, we did the uh, uh, study of that book more in depth, and the. Uh, the the remaining year was more concerning that uh, we study concerning that uh, science concerning a takhrij and the likes. Okay, good. Uh, before we come to takhrij, because I think it's uh, really important <coughs> to understand that that's like the application of the science, Aywa. really. 
before we come to Takhrij, so you said there's Mustalah Hadith, and you mentioned there's Tadween of Tadween of Sunnah, Aywa. and looking at, for example, the development of uh, what. What, talk a little bit about Tadweed Nasuna so people understand what it means and how important it is as well. Hey, so concern that, uh, hey, before I go to that question, you ask concern for the Talibul ilm over here, or can leave that later. Yeah. Or concern that, uh, uh, I want to leave that later, we discuss concerning how to prepare oneself to as a separate happy. topic. Let's leave it as a separate topic. Hey, okay, yeah. so uh, we're discussing concerning that uh, Tadweed Nasuna. Hey, Sunnah as a part. So uh, alongside concerning studying uh, Ilmul Mustala, that you'll find that uh, in Kult al Hadith, that in the first year, that we study concerning, might concern Tadweed or Sunnah. So we're concerned that one of the ulama, who was then a, uh, that the professor that he wrote a book on that topic, where he can somewhat give the, the, uh, the student that uh, insight and knowledge regarding how concerning the science of hadith was developed. Yeah. And concerning that, uh, we said the juhud concerned the efforts of the ulama in writing books regarding ilm al hadith. Yeah. So concerning that, and so he made it into two areas one regarding Tadween, Kutubu Sunnah, the books of the Sunnah. So who are the person? Who? Abu Dawood. What was his book? Who was the author? What was the purpose of that book? What was the concerning that uh, efforts around that book? All right? But can some give us in a sequential order regarding the books, how they started regarding and muata and move up concerning the books of Hadith? Yeah. Nam. Uh, so that's concerned to the person by insight regarding how the science was developed. Yeah. And of the purpose behind that particular uh, topic is that uh, you'll find even more today where some people try to, ha uh, to attack Hadith regarding that. Uh, the development of science came later on. Yeah. You understand? So that particular science was going to to reinforce the student and also within this science concerning that this matter started early, yeah. per se, concerning that Tadween or Sunnah. So you have concern we call Tadween or Sunnah. Uh, so when this actually began, uh, when this, when this uh, effort started, yeah. so it was concerned, you know, the, uh, knowing those books from the early books and the books that came after regarding matters relating to a Sunnah. Yeah. Uh, then also, he had a second aspect concerning Kutubur Rijal. So yeah. concerning when these books also started to develop, and they kind of somewhat, uh, so that was kind of somewhat to give that talib yeah. or the student that insight regarding how the science was developed. Just as we have concerning with Mustala, how the science also developed. Yeah. Concerning who was the first of those who wrote in the top and the science and the various books that uh, relates to Ilm al Mustala. Yeah. So Tadwin al I guess, is really important to put it in a historical context. In a historic. And yeah. there's a book by Sheikh, I think, in English, Early Hadith Studies by Sheikh Mustafa al Azami, I think. Hey, well, that's which is in English, which is looks a little bit on the topic. It's hey, not so, fully, but hey, it covers so, that. Exactly, exactly. So you find that the Mustashrikeen, they try to had, uh, make uh, an, an attack upon Hadith yeah. by concern, by way of concerning, when did you, concerning you, concerning us as Muslim, start to kind of somewhat uh, uh, record concerning books of Hadith? Yeah. So those books were kind of somewhat to refute some yeah, of so the this was claims. a refutation of it's that. So it's really important because... they to clarify that. And to clarify because in academia, I think his name is Joseph <laughs> Such or something like that, yeah. he's the one that everyone turns to, yeah, talking about source. as a main source, as trying to, like you said, criticise the, the hadith studies yeah, as, a, as a science, basically, yeah. and try to put... Okay, that's, so that's the second one, which is... So we had Mustala Hadith Tadwina Sunnah. Ilm al-Rijal. Ilm al-Rijal. Tell me a bit about Ilm al-Rijal. What is it as a topic and what, are, what is the book that you studied or what are the main books which are still... Reference books, I guess, because they're going to be. Hey, concerned that ilm al-rijal, concerned that. Uh, and 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 we're going to talk about an important topic, man. The application of it today, i.e., okay, okay. are we going to say that we can say that this person mm. is, you hey. know? So the thing concerning uh, ilm al-rijal, concerned is more is more focused on those narrators of hadith, wal yeah. athar. So we're concerned we have hadith wal athar regarding athar of the salaf, regarding the sahaba and the, the likes. So you find that. Uh, <coughs> Uh, in the early years of concerning the uh, writing of books, whether in all the science that have those things that uh, uh, most of the writers would kind of somewhat follow a system of, they'll write their books also it have concerning a synod. So even books concerning usul al-fiqh in the early days, books concerning some books of uh, fiqh and books of hadith, also books of tafsir, that uh, you'll find that of a common practice was for them to mention their book with an isnad. Yeah, and yeah. it's not meaning in concern the chain of narrators. Chain of narrators yeah. So you'll find there's a common practice in the early days up until about the fifth century of Islam. Yeah. Books were written with Isnad. Uh, so you'll find that uh, of those things regarding that uh, within Islam is concerning how to verify whether by way of whether by way of hadith or by way of athar, or what of the Sahaba and the likes, which of those are actually meet a certain criteria of acceptability. Yeah. Which one we can accept and which one we can not accept but we have to have a system in place. Yeah. So concerning that system in place, regarding of the system in place, that the, is to critique also the narrators. Yeah. We are concerning from an aspect concerning one, their adala. So regarding every narrator that narrates a hadith or a narration go back to Islam, 
that I want to know concerning is Adala, concerning that person level concerning is Adala, is level concerning that, uh, we might say that uh, uh, is Adala, maybe in English the word concerning that uh, is level of credibility. Yeah. Now I'm regarding, is he an upright person? Yeah. Then the second level is regarding, the second aspect is regarding that narrator in regards to his level of doubt. Um, well, doubt concerning meaning, or well, he's able to memorize that hadith. Yeah. Is he very precise in his memory? So the person will be critiqued from those two aspects, his level of adala, regarding concerning that his level of credibility, and also second regarding his level of preciseness in rec uh, memorizing that hadith. Yeah. Now, so each person will be critiqued. So you have books that are particular on that topic. Yeah. Regarding concerning those men or the narrators, how can we verify verify those main things? As we mentioned before, their level of adala and also their credibility and also their memorization. So those books will give us some insight yeah. where this person, what have been said about him or what have been mentioned for or against him. Yeah. And then a person then can make a decision whether this person is one who he meets a certain criteria where he can accept his narration or not meeting the criteria, then his narration is uh, uh, rejected. I mean, my hadith section is not big compared to my fiqh section. I went to Sharia, obviously. Hey. But I've got tahdeeb and tahdeeb hey, down there, which is on the left to you at the bottom. And also, there's another book by Imam Dhahabi on uh, yeah, Mizan. Mizan. Hey, so you have various books on the top. Yeah. and said that you find the concern, the books that you just mentioned, concern the books of Ibn Hajar, they were considered uh, of the Mutaakhir, the ones who came later on. Okay. So you have certain books that are considered to be the, uh, the, the books of concerning that uh, the ulama of the Mutaqaddim, uh, the ulama of the past, yeah. where there was the original concern of Bukhari, Rahimullah. Yeah. So you know, Imam Bukhari, Rahimullah, that is famous for is Sahih. Yeah. But also in Imam al Hadith, he is known to be of those people who also that he wrote books in Ar Rijal. Yeah. So he has a a three series of books, but they come in volumes yeah. that he calls concerning Tawarikh. Yeah. So of tawar, uh, the, the word tawar, uh, Tawarikh in, amongst the ulama of hadith, it means concerning that also a book that mention about Rijal. Yeah. Yeah, so he so has concerning Tawarikh al-Khabir yeah. that goes into critiquing of Rijal and also Tawarikh al-Awsat, another smaller, medium one, and also you have al sugra So you have three books. Yeah. Then you have concern, the likes concerning that uh, you have uh, Ibn Adi, yeah. uh, you have uh, Ar Razi. So you have many of the ulama of old who are considered to be the, the main concerning ulama of Ilm al Hadith, the ulama of old who wrote on that topic. Yeah. So those books would be the main books that would be used. The likes of Ibn Hajar Rahimullah, his book concerning came after because you have a book that become that uh, is like a, com uh, a book that is called Ta'zib al Kamal yeah. Nam by Al Mizzi. Yeah. So Imam Mizzi Rahimullah, of those concerning of the, uh, as one of the main hadith, main ulama of hadith of his time. Yeah. And it is mentioned that he was the one who prayed over Sheikh Islam regarding his janazah. Okay. So, Mizzi Rahimullah, that uh, uh, this author that we mentioned here in this particular book, yeah. that uh, he has Abdul Ghani, he has a book which is called Ta'deeb al Kamal. Yeah. So, he has this book which is combined, is a book to critique the, uh, the narrators of Kutub al Sitta and the other books. And the other books of hadith. And, and, and each of those, like for example, Bukhari, he has more than one books in hadith. Adabul yeah. Mufrad and the likes of a Muslim. So also was thing was for to uh, to creek and uh, together the the written the narrators of those six main books: Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, uh, at Timidi, Nasari Ibn Majah, yeah. and also some include Al Muatta, yeah. and also their other books. Because okay, yeah. some of those authors, like for example, they may have more than one books. Yeah. Right. So to look concerning the main books, that is the one that we mentioned, Kutub Sita, and their other books, and can I somewhat gather all the men that are mentioned in those books into this one book, yeah. which come in volumes. Yeah. So you find others then also kind of somewhat build on this. Yeah. So Mizra Rahimullah, he kind of somewhat came and added and subtracted. Yeah. You understand? And make the book they call, uh, uh, this is uh, the book of Al-Mizzi, where it become like the corner book concerning Ilm al-Hadid. So that became the? The main book. The main book. Aywa. Okay, if I open that book, I'm going to find, for example, what am I going to find? A name of a Rawi. A. And then the hukum or the ruling on the rawi. So what you find in that book, you find that each person is mentioned in a certain order, alphabetical order. So you yeah. find that person, Fulan. So they mention concerning which book you can find is hadith. Okay. Then you'll find after, then concerning what have been said. So there's something about him concerning when he was born, death. And also you'll find concerning information regarding what have been said for or against him. Yeah. So either those who praise them yeah. and also those who critique it yes, are, are yes. said things. So you find that type of information. That's the science of Jar. Yes, that's the science of Jar. Yeah. So you have an idea concerning what has been said then. It becomes for the Talib now too. So that book is to kind of somewhat to gather as much information on that person. Yeah. Regarding that matter that relates to whether to the, uh, regarding concerning him as a narrator. Yeah. Now, so then after then you can make an assessment regarding whether this person is one that you can 
accept his narration or reject his narration. Okay, good. So that brings us, before we speak about Jarab Ta'adil separately, to the other subject, which is Tekhrij of Hadith. hadith. Tell us about Tekhrij of Hadith, because to me it's the, the application of Mustala Hadith and Ilm al Rijal on a particular book. So you, you, there's a book, it, that book mentions a Hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it doesn't mention, for example, you don't know is that, the hukum of that Hadith. Aye. So a scholar comes, he takes that book and he goes through it and he applies that science. Is that. So, Ilm al-Takhrij, so Ilm al-Takhrij, I said you have, uh, then we call it concerning uh, Ilm al-Takhrij, which is concerning that uh, to uh, the person kind of somewhat, yes, to find a hadith and then able to can go to the source of those hadith concerning who have, uh, which books narrate that hadith from the books that are musnada and then try to come to a final uh, hukum on that hadith, yeah. ruling on the hadith, whether the hadith is authentic or not. Uh, so you find that the books of hadith, so you find that, uh, so Takhrij will be concerning that uh, you find that uh, in contemporary time, is a science that you find that uh, a lot of efforts was placed in the science yeah. uh, regarding Imul Takhrij before it was done. So you have, you have the likes of concern like Ibn Hajar of a few books in Takhrij yeah. and also another scholar that is also well known one of the concerning Ibn Malakin. Yeah. So you find a scholar concerning Ibn Malakin, he died around concerning 804 or 704 Hijri. Yeah. So Ibn Malakin, Rahimullah, of those kind of somewhat have a lot of books on that topic yeah. uh, regarding concerning Takhrij. So Takhrij, the idea of what became uh, Imul Takhrij that there, for example, uh, you find that, for example, Ibn Hajar or Ibn Malakin, that he went to one of the main books of Shafi, because he's Shafi. Nam, uh, that is written by uh, a main books in a Shafi fiqh, then extract all the hadith yeah. and Athar from that book. And then he went on then to critique it by way of concerning where can you find this hadith in various books. Yeah. Then also what have been said for or against that hadith. Yeah. And then come to a final conclusion whether the hadith is authentic or not. Nam, okay. then you find that, uh, so you find that uh, Ibn Hajar have done this. Uh, Ibn Malakin, so Ibn Hajar book that is famous concerning uh, Talhis al Habir, yeah. Nam, which is uh, a muqtasar of the book of Ibn Malakin that is called Al Badr al Munir. Yeah. So, Badr al Munir today, alhamdulillah, is in print. Yeah. Yeah, we have various prints, but it's in print, so it comes in over 20 something volumes. Oh, yeah. Nam, then Ibn Hajar rahimahullah kind of somewhat condensed it yeah. in a book which is called uh, Al Talhis al Habir. Yeah. Nam, uh, it's, Shafi. it's a book originally it's book of Shafi. Shafi it's, 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 those books are mainly concerning that Shafi. Yeah. Concerns so, so to be concerned for a person who study, for example, Shafi fiqh, yeah. then that will be a book that is important for them yeah. to kind of somewhat to critique the hadith that they use in their books. Yeah, yeah. So you find you find that every matab of the ulama have gone through them. So you find out in contemporary time that you find that Sheikh Albani rahimullah that you can somewhat also put a lot of emphasis in this area yeah. regarding concerning takhrij al hadith. Yeah. Now we find that for a while was signed was not that given its due attention. So Sheikh Albani, Rahimullah, when he came, he kind of somewhat uh, start to uh, critique books by way of critiquing the hadith in those books. Yeah. So of those books he did concerning the Hanabila and also various other books that he kind of somewhat uh, did and also his own books yeah. from what he have uh, researched. So from, from the Hanabila that would be Irwa al so yeah, uh, It would be of concerning for the Hanabila yeah. and you find that even con uh, so he kind of somewhat that, uh, Start what, what, what did he do with that? Like, for example, if we get the book down... Hey, if we bring the book and we show an example, one of the middle volumes, there you are. What's an example of? So, find concerns. So, that, uh, book, so we mentioned concerning Iwal al-Ghalil fi takhrij al-Hadith manar al-Sabil. So, yeah. uh, in this case, concerned that, uh, that uh, Muhaddit, he'll go to a particular book. Yeah. So, they've done it in books in fiqh. Yeah. They have done it in books in tafsir. Yeah. Nam, uh, usul al-fiqh. Yeah. Nam, so you're concerning uh, takhrij is not just restricted to, it somewhat hadith. is to hadith. Yeah. Concerned that, so they go to different, different books, even books of tafsir. Yeah. Nam, so in this case, that you find concern for each mathab. Al-Hanafi, Al-Maliki, Al-Shafi, and Hanabila. Yeah. Nam, where you have uh, Al-Zahiri. Uh, but as for those four, Nam, that are more predominant, you find concern that efforts were there concerning the books of the, for the Hanafi. Yeah. So concerning Al-Zaylai, that he went to the books of the Hana, uh, one of the main books, Al Hidayah, yeah. and he took out all the hadith from that book and make a takhrij of it. Okay. Check and verify the hadith whether they're authentic or not. And also with this, you see the errors where he may mention a hadith that doesn't exist. Completely fabricated. Yeah, not even that, not, doesn't not, exist for stuff. Not, I, they can't find it in other books of hadith. Not, it's, 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 in, in a sense of concern, if I saw, in a sense of exist concern that, in other words, that something about they may mention hadith, yes, it doesn't exist. Yeah. In the books of hadith, yeah. uh, it is something that may be mentioned by the ulama of uh, and the ulama of uh, al fiqh in their books, yeah. but really, had, as a hadith, it has no basis. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe, had, uh, maybe sometimes in those books, you'll find the books uh, in the books of uh, uh, al fiqh where sometimes they are not as precise 
and mention the wording of the hadith. Yeah. So they mention the word in its general meaning. Yeah. But with that wording, it doesn't exist. Yeah. But you are, but it's the meaning that he captured. Yeah. Nam. So uh, you find those things. So, so, so fiqh, the, the books of fiqh. You find they're, those they're things. In, they're in need. They were in hey, need so of book, this. They hey, so were in need of this badly. Hey, so, this, hey, so this kind of somewhat helps too. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so can somewhat uh, helps to assist concerning the books of the the fuqaha. Yeah. Uh, so. Irwal Galil by Sheikh Albani fi Tahrij Ahadith Manar Sabil. So in the sense of there's a book that is a, a well known book in the uh, books of the Hanabila yeah. and a book that is a Mutamid. Yeah. Now, is, which, is uh, as, which is the explanation of Adilil Talib, Talib. Which Ay, is what? one of the main Mu'tamid books. So it's a book that is Mu'tamid from that method of Sheikh Haran with an explanation, but he chose this one because uh, Manar Sabil mentioned many Adil. Uh, adil. Yeah. So he mentioned Aqwal, but also he'll mention the Ahadith or proofs for. These positions. Yeah. Nam. So he kind of somewhat took this uh, book per se and then went to check, went to check per se every hadith on Athar mentioned yeah. in that book. You understand? So the book could be laid out in this one, Manar Sabil. Uh, Manar Sabil is there because the book in fiqh. So this one of uh, Sheikh Albani, that, uh, for example, that uh, he mentioned concerning hadith that uh, uh, there's be 918. Yeah. Nam. So he mentioned hadith. Abi Hurairah anhu marfu and marfu I mean go back to the Prophet Then I mention إذا كان سوم إذا كان يوم سوم أحدكم فلا يرفض يوم إذن ولا يسخب فإن شاتمه أحد أو قاتله فليقول إني إمر صائم. So the hadith and I mention متفقون عليه. So the hadith is go back according to that what is mentioned in Manar Sabil. So now Sheikh Alban can do now from there. Then he take it from there. So they mention where it is mentioned in that book. Yeah, you understand, which is a page 220. Yeah. Have a look at this, grab this, if you can zoom in on here so we can see the actual text. Okay, can you see it there clearly? So we're looking here basically. So this yeah. is the hadith, the text of the hadith, the safha of Manar Sabil, where you find the actual, and then the, everything underneath is the ta'liq of Sheikh Al-Ban. Somewhat so, he mentioned, yeah. uh, that's now uh, Sheikh Al-Ban, also mentioned awwal. Then it's started mention concerning, and Ibn Jaysa mentioned concerning the Isnad. Yep. Now I'm saying mentioning concerning that kind of somewhat go back to the uh, take the hadith back to its original source, which is yep. mentioned the isnad. Then he mentioned concerning then start to mention concerning the this hadith concerned this is a portion of hadith. Yeah. Now so kind of somewhat uh, mention the hadith by its full length yep. uh, type of thing. You find that in most of these books we mentioned with in takhrij, you mentioned mutafkun alay. Some is just kind of somewhat just to kind of somewhat prefix the hadith back to its source because Bukhara and Muslim generally the hadith are not really that much criticized. Yeah. Nam. So the effort regarding this will be concerning more concern that's going to somewhat reference Hadith back to Bukhari. They mention Akrajahu Bukhari. Then they mention the uh, the page and the volume. Uh, the volume. Nam. That's the volume for uh, such and such. Well, Muslim. We can so the way Hadith can be sourced in Muslim. So the author they mentioned Mutafkun Alay. Then Sheikh Alban can somewhat add it to that. He mentioned Wal Nasai. So these are the main well. sources of this Hadith can be found also not just in Bukhari and Muslim but Al Nasai. Then he mentioned Nasai ibn Khuzayma. Wa Ahmed was Siyak Lahu. I mean, concerned that uh, the hadith that had been mentioned by Az Mutafakuna is more in line with the wording of Ahmed. I mean, it's not in line with the full wording of Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. You understand? So it's not the, uh, the exact wording of Bukhari and Muslim, even though he prefix, uh, um, referenced hadith to Bukhari and Muslim, yeah. that the wording that he's mentioned here is, is more the wording of oh, Ahmed. Ahmed they mention Wa Siyak Lahu, meaning Siyak, the wording is that of. Ahmed. Yeah. You understand? Then he mentioned, well, Bayhaki also mentioned Hadith. Then he mentioned concerning that uh, different, different uh, Athani that uh, others who have uh, also mentioned, there. mentioned the Hadith. Yeah. Just so everyone can see, look, the Hadith is short. You saw that it was one Hadith, two lines. Look at the ta'liq of the takhrij. It goes down all the way down to Rabi', Khamis, <coughs> it goes Sadisa, it goes. So he's you know, even different, different wayat of that hadith. Different wayat of that same hadith. He goes on to it's oh, two pages. The takhrij of that hadith, which is short. Short and that's a short. two and a half pages, and, and that's that a sh short. And that's a short takhrij as well. Takhrij. So you can see there's a lot of work that goes involved to make so a takhrij. Uh, so you'll find something uh, for example. The reason why I highlight this is because there was when I was at the jamia, everyone, there was a fad we have to go to kulat hadith because uh, you're going to be a muhadith, which is good. But the the work of a muhadith. Is sitting down in books making research. It's a lot of. It's not. It's not. It's more of the most concerned. Uh, the main concern uh, the muhaddith are people. They are very concerned that people are very. Uh, uh, they're not of those people who. Uh, they're not as uh, public or not, not, not out there. A lot of their work is really 
requires research. Research, yeah. You understand? So in, the library, in the in library, books. in the library. You understand? So, like, for example, Sheikh Albani was famous for being like a part of that library yeah. in concerning in Damascus. Yeah. You understand? Because he spent so much time there. He would get there in the morning and then leave there when it, after closing hours, normal closing hours. So a lot of stuff concerning the muhaddis or personal study hadith, it relies regarding the sitting and having books. And uh, so that's another uh, example, that's, uh, this one that comes after, that you mentioned concerning uh, the next hadith. Yep. Now I'm saying mention concerning hadith uh, 919. In this book you mentioned hadith, Ibn Abbas. Wa Anas, the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas wa Anas. So I said that now, the person said the hadith that it makes it uh, easy for him to understand this language. Yeah. You understand? So a person who does not have that type of uh, training or study hadith, some of the language might become a bit uh, difficult to put it together. Yeah, he won't understand. The he won't understand. Yeah. won't understand, yeah. Yeah, you get left behind. Yeah. So I mentioned the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas and also Anas ibn Malik. And the Prophet Islam, if the after call, that means that when the person uh, breaks his fast, what to be said? Yeah. Nam. They said that the person says, "Allahumma laka sumna wa ala rizqak aftarna. Allahumma taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami'ul alim." Wow. You understand? So that hadith is somewhat. So I mentioned. So Sheikh Al Bani in this book now, because we said the first hadith we mentioned before was in Bukhari Muslim. Then it is accepted that the hadith is authentic. When you yeah. Bukhari Muslim, then it is authentic. So this hadith that he mentioned, he mentioned the first thing he mentioned, daif. Right away. So the first concern and the final, the, the hukum or the conclusion is hadith, is a hadith that is daif. No. Then he starts then to go into the detail of why, you understand, how we come to this conclusion. Yeah, which means the hadith is weak, right? Yeah, the hadith daif meaning concerning weak. Which means you can't act upon it. Hey, so based upon this hadith, that says the hadith that so, is... So far. Uh, to... hey, so far, yeah. you understand, so far. So either means concerning why, uh, so it, it varies that uh, it will understand from Sheikh Albani that it's a hukum on the entire hadith. Yeah. You understand, sometimes they mention isnaduhu daif. I mean, concerning that it's not for that particular hadith, it is weak. But it doesn't necessarily mean the hadith uh, in uh, the final conclusion is that the hadith is daif. Yeah. You might have other sources that may aid it. Yeah. That's a little bit uh, uh, detailed. But the main thing that he comes to a conclusion, but you find that, uh, so you find that even this the hadith, though, is somewhat a portion of it is well known as the dua that is mentioned regarding iftar. Yeah. Even though you find that instead of hadith, uh, the reality concern is to mention that there is no authentic hadith regarding a dua to be said while breaking fast. Yeah. That's a conclusion anyway, That's outside conclusion. of this. Yeah, it's not outside of this. No, yeah, don't say. You might have a hadith, but no, there's no strong, strong hadith. I concern that, I concern, yeah, amongst the ulama of hadith, concern regarding what to be said in breaking yeah. one's fast. Yeah. So you have different hadith that we mentioned, yeah. but you might find that most of those hadith are criticized. Yeah, regarding it. being criticized, that they are considered to be weak. Yeah. You understand? So that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of other names mentioned. So in the fences, you find that with also books of Takrid, you also mention, you find that you'll mean that you find that they are mentioned books that are well known, Kutubu Sitta. Yeah. But they also you find names of books that are not known to most. Yeah. You understand? So you mentioned before you mentioned Al Bayhaqi. Yeah. So Bayhaqi Imam Bayhaqi Rahimullah have a series of books in hadith. Yeah. Not just one, a series of books. Yeah. Nam, and also considered to be of the Kibar ulama of hadith. So you have uh, Dara Kutni. Yeah. Now another conference, one of the ulama of hadith, who also have his own collection of hadith. Yeah. Now they mention Ibn Sinni. They also concerned that he has a book concerning, that his book concerning Amal, Yawm wa Layla. Now yeah. Al-Tabarani, fi yeah. Al-Mujim Al-Kabir, because he has three ma'ajim, one of them being Kabir, well also it was Sahir. Uh, 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 Sahir. Yeah. So you find that uh, with books of, uh, of Takhreej, can someone expose you to various things concerning Ilm al -Rijal, also knowing concerning Books of hadith per se of the ulama of old, also the aqwal of the ulama who was spoken about, uh, spoke about the hadith mention. Awwal Abdul Malik, hadha, daif jiddin, meaning one of the narrators in that hadith yeah. that is, uh, so he starts with the hadith of Ibn Abbas. Yeah. Naam? So he mentioned two hadith, Ibn Abbas and the hadith of Anas. Anas yeah. So he first starts with the hadith of Ibn Abbas. Yeah. So he mentioned uh, the Isnad. Yarwihi Abdul Malik Ibn Harun Ibn Antaza. And Abihi and Jaddihi and who Marfuhan Bihi. Then I mentioned who are some of the sources of that, uh, the other sources that have narrated the hadith of Anas. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas, yeah. Nam. Then he mentioned Darakut and others who have also narrated the same hadith mentioned, called to meaning Sheikh Albani. Hadha Isnad Daif Jiddan. Yeah. Fihi Illatan. Yeah. It has two uh, errors or yeah. two things to be looked at or to be uh, two of its shortcomings. So I mentioned one first. Al-Ula, Abdul Malik, Hatha. One of the narrators, as I mentioned in the Isnad, Yarwi Abdul Malik ibn Harun. Yeah. So this Abdul Malik is considered to be Daif Jiddan. How, you know, how does he know this? Qala Zahabi fi Du'afa. 
that that Habib Rahimullah, also the ulama of hadith, as a book called Duhafa, that they only mention that big people are weak. Yeah. So the book is Duhafa, narrators oh, who are weak. What does he say in Duhafa? Censored and says, Taraku, that he's been left, concerned that the ulama of hadith have left him. Left him. Now yeah. understand, so, huh? Qala al-Sadi, Dajjal, so the ulama of Sadi, that have been a Dajjal, which is a very kind of somewhat severe criticism of a person. Yeah. That's a Taraku, meaning everyone left him. Yeah. Not just a few, everyone have left him. Left him. You understand? Yeah. understand because the ulama of hadith, the kibar ulama of hadith, that have nothing to do with him in the sense of they don't accept his narrative, you understand? So, and that's concerning the systems. I mentioned al dhahab again, naql of limizan, also again So that's, that's al al rizal here. And, and the, the one, so if you look, if you were to break down this, you find the first aspect is the <coughs> mustalah hadith, the hukum of the hadith, hey, da'if. And so what is meant by da'if? And what is meant by da'if, for example, you're going to know that, the scholars of hadith hey, so know that. Understand. And hey. after that he mentions the masadir that you find that hadith, hey, whether it's the, source the sources of the hadith, hey, like you mentioned that you study. And after that he mentions ilm al-rijal, what the scholars hey, say, so the critique of the person. Of critique of the person. Hey. Why is da'if hey, to and stuff like that? <coughs> so in these books, right, the, the first the, the sin they follow, they'll mention the people who need to be discussed, they'll mention so so you might have the Isnad maybe five individual, yeah. but four P are two of them are people that are on the discussion. So rather than discussing the ones who are well known, they'll leave those oh, ones that they cut. And the ones that are somewhere on the discussion, they'll more kind of somewhat discuss them in more in detail. Amazing. So but so, so that the I mean, science some of the very detailed yeah. science. Also so what it highlights <laughs> is what well, the scholars they put the amount of effort that they put into into preserving the Sunnah. Hey, well. You can see it from past even to present in the likes of Shaykh Lubani and stuff like that. Hey. And past for example the so past. Mentioned, example, that's that's mentioned, that's mentioned concerning Al Hafiz, meaning Hafiz, we understand who's Al Hafiz. Yeah. You understand? So for example, in every science you have certain laqab uh, titles are given to a particular ulama. Yeah. You understand? So you have the Hanabil, have certain title, concerned Al Muwafaq, you yeah. know as a Hanbali. Yeah. You understand? So you mention Al Hafiz for I mentioned Fil Talkhis. So Al Hafiz ibn Hajj, Rahimahullah. Yeah. You understand? So can I somewhat. Uh, yeah. So also that's something you'd have to know. Hey, so you, you, you wouldn't know, know that unless you know, hey, you know those, uh, the science of Hadith and the labels, that, that, that the title they use for their, their scholars. Yeah. And who's given what title uh, type of thing. So that's concerned. So I said that this book concerning one of the books of many. Yeah, you understand that you find that you know even concerning that to set off credit and all credit uh, uh, to Sheikh Albani Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding that kind of somewhat of in my opinion and uh, opinion of the Sarah that he have those kind of somewhat of those who uh, are kind of somewhat uh, revive the science yeah. of our time regarding ilmu takhrij yeah. uh, type of thing so you have many books regarding concerning that his thing was so identify the hadith find them and then to uh, no, and then to pass a ruling, a judgment on them. Yeah. So you have many books related. Uh, because all of these books, you find that same that uh, that uh, pattern is cons consistent in his works. Yeah. And you find that is uh, so. He started that madrasa regarding concerning takrij. Then you find that others of his students and those who of uh, of uh, some uh, involvement in hadith also have consumed as have continued that path. If it's a, uh, the Hanbali book is the first of those other ones who have done it. You find others know have done it. Yeah, so you have a few books of now if you the Hana concerning Takrij, the books of Hanabila. The Hanabla yeah, yeah. In concerning for example Al Ka the book of Al Kafi by Ibn Khudama. Yeah. You have a Takrij of the hadith of that of recent. Yeah, yeah. Stand, and also some of the Shuru. Yeah. See how Salama Sheikh have uh, done some work over concerning the books. So that's what I said. So what you find, so the example of it, you find are commenting in other books. Yeah. You understand that uh, some books make uh, so is the same uh, some books, yeah, so the same pattern, but also you find that Takrij of Books of Tafsir, yeah. uh, where in the sense of those uh, narration or uh, Tafsir of the Quran by way of Hadith, yeah. well, Akwar of the Salaf, they all check those. They'll check those. Yeah. You understand? Also in books, even Usul al Fiqh. Yeah. You understand? Also books uh, in uh, other Got in a question. Adab and the likes. Got a question, because it's something that you know comes up a lot anyway. And I know there's a bit of a difference of opinion on it. But just to summarize before we go to the question is. Kurut uh, al-Hadith in the Islamic University of Medina you become a specialist in Hadith to the degree that you're able inshallah to take one of these books where the Hadith is mentioned but without mentioning you're able to go f take a Hadith extract it and find the hukm of the Hadith by going back to the relevant books that's generally speaking what you can yeah. do uh, okay when we, when we come across a Hadith which is Da'if there's it, can you act upon weak Hadith which, whose weakness is not to the level of fabricated, so it's weak, but it's still considered weak, it's not Hassan. Aye. Can you act upon it, and if you can, or if you can't, why not, and what can you act upon it in? Yeah, so that's a discussion we're concerned with Ilm al-Hadith, and also kind of somewhat, uh, it impacts on other science. Yeah. You understand? So regarding concerning that, uh, is a Hadith, or Hadith that are said to be Da'if. 
Yeah. Can one act upon it or use them as a, as a form of proof or yeah. source? Yeah. So he goes back to Yavan Ijma between the ulama regarding a hadith al daifa Hadith are said to be weak, uh, that uh, they are not a source regarding matters relating to aqidah yeah. and also matter regarding halal and haram, meaning ahkam al Okay. You understand? So yeah. in that two particular here concerning, uh, so matters regarding Akida yeah. and matters regarding halal and haram, matters concerning fiqh related matters, they are not to be used as a proof. Yeah. And that's an ijma. Ijma, because that's done. Yeah, in that area. So the other area now concerned that you find is a discussion between the ulama regarding that you might find concerning a hadith that are said to be daif, but uh, as a form of tafsir. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's a, 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 a hadith have come to us that give a tafsir of that ayah yeah. that relates not to those two things. Yeah. Can that be used? Not, yeah. you understand, not relating to ahkam, a sharia, or uh, Akhida, things yeah. that are unseen alike. Can this hadith that is weak but is in an area of tafsir or matters concerning seerah, can yeah. they be used as a proof? So you have a discussion between the ulama that you find that of the ulama of old that you find many kind of somewhat there. I think Ahmed Rahimullah is somewhat more lenient in that area. Yeah. Concerned that a person can use this, is a, they can be used yeah. but with some clarity. That yeah. a person can clarify the hadith is daif but it can be used. It's not as, they are not as, as uh, so as, as stern regarding the other area compared to this area. Yeah. Okay. You understand? But you find that, but you find the next method of the ulama of uh, regarding concerning the hadith of daif is not to be used in anything yeah. at all in for anything regarding Islam. Yeah. Can I ask you your position on it? Uh, what's your, what's your raja in the kanta? What do you hold? Uh, regarding concerning matters concerning you find that uh, I'm more and that uh, I'm uh, in between so that at Tawakkuf. Tawakkuf. Hey, Tawakkuf. Okay. Hey. Uh, yeah. Prefer, I prefer my, my books. Uh, prefer not to use them. Yeah. You understand? But uh, if a person kind of somewhat understand the masala and it is used with kind of within those guidelines, then I understand, I understand where they're coming, where from. They're coming from. I know personally. where they're coming from. Personally, you understand? You but personally, I generally concerning shy away from hadith to daif. Nam. Okay, so that's a lot of information on studying hadith when you're in the jamia. <coughs> so you studied in the jamia, graduated in two thousand and one. Uh, and just you've been teaching since then obviously alhamdulillah I know because I've you know come back and I've attended your lessons and stuff like that in the masjid and also around London as well uh, currently you do you've got classes in hadith explanation of Muhtasar of Sahih Bukhari Sahih must be mentioned for and as well in Aqidah and in Fiqh as well so just to highlight the Jami although that's the Takhasus or the speciality that's not all you study. Yeah. You also study Tawheed, Aqidah, Fiqh, as you mentioned anyway, Tafsir of the Quran, all the sciences. So all the sciences. sciences. Yeah, yeah, but this is what you focus on the most. Uh, okay, if a student is here now in the UK, they want to study Hadith because they understand the importance of the Sunnah <coughs> and holding to the Sunnah, obviously. What's the methodology that you'd advise them? Where do they begin? Obviously, they need a teacher, but what would be the books that they'd start with? Hey, you are. So, regarding concerning that, uh, as in so that a, as a, a manhaj regarding studying Ilm al Hadith, yeah. Nam, uh, so I'll mention uh, that because Ilm al Hadith can somewhat it go branch off into various science. Yeah. So, each book, have, each of those science have their own, as I said, no, books that relates to the beginner, Al Mutawasid, Wal Mutakadim, yeah. like in every science. So, the thing concerning the person from the West who wants to uh, kind of somewhat have a, a passion for hadith and want to study hadith, then uh, one, yes, they need, regarding ilm and hadith, because of the complexity of this science, it needs a teacher. Yeah. It needs a teacher. It's other science that needs it, just like usul al-fiqh. It yeah. needs a teacher. The answer about the books that would be the general books that are studied, that uh, the more traditional, what would mean in concern the man that are used or mentioned regarding, that a person will start with a book they call either Baykuniya, with yeah. some, yeah. you understand? Uh, which is like about 30 something abiyat debate on Ilm al Hadith, but yeah. it's very mukhtasar and doesn't really capture most, uh, much. Yeah. But uh, so, some, so some of the ulama we can sell, so yeah, but the books that are more established are concerning the books of Ibn Hajar, Rahimullah, which is a book that he called concerning uh, Al Nuzha, which yeah. is a Shah uh, Nuzat al Fikr, and also Al Nukbatul, uh, Ay Nuzat al Ay Nukba. So those are the books that they would normally start with as a beginner, which is those books that kind of somewhat give you concerning on what different types of hadith and they mention concerning that uh, the definition yeah. you understand so the person can somewhat can have an idea with, uh, concerning what is this word this terminology and what it means yeah. you understand so like in the bullet points yeah. hadith to sahih da, 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 and a few points and then you move on yeah. you understand but the thing is mainly to capture concerning what does this term terminology means yeah. you understand so traditionally concerning al-nubbatul fiqr or nuzha 
and not that it would be the books that a person are set to start with. Yeah. But because of, of recent, the last maybe 20 years, you find many of books concerning uh, Mustala have somewhat been printed. So you have now a more a wider collection of books to look at and to see which are more suitable for a beginner. Yeah. So even now the discussion concerning that some of the people of Hadith studies are saying concerning those book of Ibn Hajar may not be the book to start with. Yeah. Because even though they are Muqtasa, but they are somewhat very, uh, they go up, they are somewhat, they, they discuss, they are somewhat compact in the information they give. Yeah. You understand? So even though it means it's somewhat very compact. Yeah. So it may not be, and discuss, for example, Nukhba, it discuss over 100 anwa of Ulum and Hadith. Yeah. Most books don't discuss that from the that, books of old. That many, yeah. You understand? So, they mentioned that you might find other books that maybe, so if a book of said that Ibn Mulakin Rahimullah, yeah. that uh, he has uh, a muqtasar of the book of Ibn Salah. Yeah. You understand? Then, that he called al muqna then he made uh, a muqtasar of that muqtasar, yeah. and it's called concerning al tazkira fi Ulum al Hadith, that he yeah. can somewhat, with uh, some mention that maybe something more, especially in the West, maybe adequate to, more, be more suitable to start with. Yeah. So that would be a beginner's book. Yeah, it would be a beginner's, beginner's book. book. Yeah, a big, as a beginner book. Uh, so you have other books on that line. But as I said, you know, yeah. it's many books now, you have more choices, but it's, if the person wants to understand that feel. Yeah. You know what, you've just, you've just highlighted an important benefit that uh, you should go to the person, or you want to know <coughs> about a specific subject, it's better to go to the person who knows of, the field. of that field. Because if it was me, I'm like, okay, let's begin with Nukhbat al Fikr, that's the method that everyone studies. Hey. But now you're saying this, obviously that's your subject, you, you, you're in touch with the books and stuff like that. So again, like you said, yeah. it's it's, uh, so have, it's important to go to yeah, the right uh, person. Uh, yeah. So you have, like I said, because of the past maybe uh, 20 years, we have uh, more books have been now uh, been printed. Yeah. So you have a little more choices compared to before then the choices were much more limited. Yeah. You understand, for example, the book had Taysir, Ulum al-Hadid by uh, Qahtan. Yeah. Now, that was a book that is even used in university. Yeah. Today now, that book is now uh, outgrown. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, it's outgrown. Wow. Even that's, the, yeah, that's you understand? You understand? Yes, yes, yes. Like today, people said, so as you said, it's important concerning that uh, understanding concerning each science is referring back to the people of that science. Yeah. You understand? They can give you the best uh, direction as to how to approach studying that science. Yeah. Which is why I guess as well, even the Mashaykh of, for example, like Bin Baz, when it comes to a hadith, hukm on a hadith, they would refer to Sheikh Laban says Sheikh Laban makes his hadith authentic, or yeah. I, they would reference even, yeah. you know, whoever it is, they still use yeah. the, in many ways, the hukum of Sheikh Laban on certain ahadith. Hey, that's the case. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered quite a bit methodology. Okay, I want to build a hadith, a library in hadith. Okay, I want to build a library in hadith. Mm. Give me your uh, essential books in, I, I guess, two essential books, apart from Kutbista, in each of these. Sciences. So, for example, let's a masad there. Al asliya. Even kutub sitta for uh, in building a light, the person also not concerning. I just remember. Shuru but... al fikr hadith. That's yeah. important. Okay, so give us a uh, give us a general library of what they'd ha what a student would have. Also, bear in <coughs> mind we haven't covered an important topic, and it's going to have to be left for another time. So I don't want to hold you. Is tabaat. Hey. Yeah, that's certain... the, next thing that, the next thing I will mention the concern. Even kutub sitta. Yeah. That also the person have to be. Uh, I said that be mindful of the print that you are that you are buying. Yeah. You understand? You have certain prints that said of of recent you find more effort in trying to ensure the accuracy of these books. Yeah. You understand? So the person has to be mindful regarding the print that you are buying to make sure to not it can somewhat actually reflect what the the the, 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 uh, the original author that he wrote. Yeah, which is another science now, which is quite science, big as well. What's it next... called? That's called tahqiq of. Or hey. is that that's hey, concerning tahqiq? Hey, concerning yeah. hey, concerning tahqiq yeah. kutub. Uh, so that's also very important, um, knowing what concerning, as I said uh, before, we're going to say that, uh, that's, that's, uh, uh, I kind of somewhat uh, looking for this particular print. I've met yeah. Yassan of uh, Umdat al Ahkam, yeah. which is the book of Umdat al Ahkam, but you have many people who have done works on it. Yeah. So I find concerning just the matin, yeah. I can easily show you 10 different check in, yeah. easily. That you've got in your library. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's, that's available. That's, that's available. That's, yeah, that's available. Okay. I mean, I've only got, I've got two or three. I've got one, like a little pocket size one, maybe. Hey, so, I've got another one, and this is this so one. So, you'll find concern that this book concerning the Umtul Ahkam concerns that you have the matin. Yeah. But then we understand, but you have an aspect of this matin. We find that Umtul Ahkam, as this particular book, that uh, the author Rahimullah 
uh, Abdul Ghani al Makdisi that his intention was to kind of somewhat gather about or just about around about 450 ahadith yeah. that relates to ahkam yeah. according to the method of the Hanabila. Yeah. Naam? But particularly from Bukhari and Muslim, yeah. more so hadith that they agree upon. Yeah. You understand? So hadith and mutafakun alayhim. So every hadith that you mention here should be in Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. You understand? Even though some hadith is not the case, that's not the case. There's some that's not in either yeah. of them, no, or not in both of them. No, they're, they're not in both. Okay. Like that was the condition. That was the condition, condition. Said, but it's not. But even in some in Bukhari and not, and not in, in Muslim. Muslim. Okay. And vice versa. Yeah. No? Uh, and also, we, so that means all that hadith are authentic. Yes, that's, that's the thing. That's, yeah. that's the, the person going to somewhat confident that the hadith mentioned in the book is authentic. authentic. You understand? That's the a. Yeah. So uh, the thing concerning that uh, sometimes the author, you understand, may mention hadith. The wording that he mentioned here in the book. It's not actually in Bukhari and Muslim. Okay. But I said sometimes though he took from a source that didn't directly came from Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. You understand? So the wording a bit off yeah. as for what is in the original book of Bukhari and Muslim. Understood, yeah. You understand? So that's I'm saying that's not so each person will make a tahkik that uh, they may have a different concerning that their aims may be different. Yeah. And their level of preciseness may be different. Yeah. And their, and their efforts, and their the knowledge, efforts. their level of so, so, skill. And yeah, skill in, so, so the more the person is skilled in the hadith, yeah. you understand, the then better. the better the tahqiq. Yeah. And just to highlight as well, because this is a book of hadith al ahkam Again, look at the tahqiq and takhrij. You get, this is that part, and all of that underneath is the takhrij of, and this is umdut al ahkam which you'd say, all the hadith are agreed upon. Yeah, yeah. Upon. Yes, I'm yeah there's still a lot of work to yeah, be done on it. Something to be, be mindful yeah. of. To be mindful. To be mindful of. of. You understand? That's the thing. Certain thing to be mindful of. So I said no. So uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so it says no. So you find that in different uh, works on books, it's kind of so. It said the important thing is knowing the books that you are, that yeah. you are putting into your library. That you're buying. In the hey, you're buying your library. Hey, the the, hey, this, hey. So uh, you're saying putting a library together. Yeah. So. Let's start with let's let's start with this anyway then, because this is one of the first books. If you're studying fiqh, even hey, you memorize, it's general, isn't it? It's a general book to hey, it's memorize. A, it's a book that is generally start concerning, but they refer to as uh, books of kutub uh, al-hadith al-ahkam. Yeah. You understand? So you'll find that uh, in uh, the study of hadith, that what is now become the tradition regarding books that are recommended by way of memory and to memorize and to study yeah. alongside concerns. So you start with Arba'in and Nawawi. Yeah. You understand? So Arba'in and Nawawi, and you have various shuru. Yeah. So for I've said, with building a maktaba also is concerning for a, the lay person or for the person who wants to enter the path of Talabat al -ilm. Let's take the second. Which is? The person wants to enter the path of Talabat al-Ilm. <laughs> okay. As the lay person, then we, we leave him to go to his imam and study. Okay, his and imam will give him, give him his direction. His imam will give him direction, inshallah. Hey. So, that, so the general concern they'll start concerning as the Talabat al-Ilm that they will, say, they will start concerning with uh, we mentioned the book Al Arba'in and Nawawi. Yeah. But I said because the book concerned, they said that uh, Al Arba'in Nawawi, Rahimullah, that uh, Ibn Salah, Rahimullah, he started like Yusuf a majlis called Majlis al Imla. Yeah. Nam, where you can someone mention those hadith. Yeah. Nam, which is like a hadith al Kuliyat, yeah. that are very concerning, that uh, fast, uh, concerning that very vast in their meaning. Yeah. You understand? So uh, he was very selective, so he would mention a hadith al Kuliyat, yeah. and uh, he started, which about 20 something, then uh, he, it, uh, he died. Yeah. The Anaw Rahimullah came and kind of somewhat completed to 40, which is actually 42 hadith. Yeah. Nam, and then Ibn Rajab, so you find, so from this book, uh, Arbaheen, many of the ulama have explained this book. Yeah. You understand? Uh, and those explanations on various levels. Yeah. The more like uh, uh, renowned of the explanation, the one by uh, Ibn Rajab Rahimullah. Yeah. But that one is, poor, is a person who's very much, you said, advanced. Yeah. You understand? Books yeah. of Ibn Rajab is for, and concern that book of uh, Isshar. Uh, Al-Ulum Al-Hikam, I yeah. forgot the name, Jam al, -Ulum. Jam al -Ulum. Yes, that, that one is more for a person, more advanced, yeah. you understand? Uh, then you have more others, of the Ulum of contemporary time, most of them are, you understand, yeah. uh, suitable for the Talib al but uh, I said for the person who, uh, who's, uh, that's more for a person, a little more advanced to start with, the one of Ibn, Ibn Rajab. Rajab. Okay. Yeah. So you'd need for your hadith and the Ibn Rajab explanation and one of the contemporary scholars, Shaykh Uthaymin, Shaykh Abdul Muslim Al-Abad. One of those. One, one of those yeah. mashaykhs. Well. So you get two. Okay. Ay, That's you have others. You have many others. There's loads. Yeah. You have, you have, you have, you have, you have many other so uh, uh, Sometimes they have a problem with my books. Sometimes I buy a book twice. <laughs> that uh, you have concerning that uh, uh, Ali Al-Qari. Yeah. Also have an explanation, which is also very good. Yeah. You understand? So you find various works on that book, but the main thing, having an explanation with that book. Yeah. You understand? So I said, with Ilm al-Hadith, that uh, 
is not just having the hadith in front of you, but also having books to help you, to guide you, to understand the hadith correctly. Yeah. You understand? That's, an important, together. that's an important point, which comes up a lot in Asul al-Fiqh. It's not allowed, they say, they mention a statement, mm. for a lay person, if he finds Bukhari, it's not allowed for him to open it and read it. Okay. In case he misunderstands it. Now, I'm not sure if you agree <laughs> with that completely, but I guess the principle is there, meaning he needs a teacher yeah, to explain said, the hadith so he doesn't misinterpret and act upon and sometimes all of my mentions are in the sense of kind of someone to show the importance. Yes, I find certain hadith in any books, that is, yeah. any person read it who can read, they'll, they'll understand the meaning, because the meaning is very muh- uh, muhkam, it's very clear. Yeah. But you find certain things that a person, he needs a teacher as the book itself, as a book, you need a guide. Need a guide. But for one hadith or two hadith, then it's clear. It's clear. Yeah. You understand? But the person, the general thing for the entire book, yeah. and again, the full benefit, yeah. you understand? So, or like in four hadith Imam Nawi, yeah. all those hadith, they're quite clear, they're quite, they're quite, they're also. Yeah, even though in yeah. Arban, you have hadith that are da'if. Even. Yeah, you have hadith that are da'if. Yeah, but not many. Yeah, not many. Yeah. You understand? So, you have a few hadith that are uh, da'if, but the things that are purpose said, but the main thing, the person have that explanation to help him, to guide him through really? understanding the book properly. We've got four hadith Imam Nawi, that's so the general. Next stage, next next stage we said that that's the next will be this book, Umdatul Ahkam. Yeah. You understand? So it'll be concerning the next stage, that is the more common practice concerning Umdatul Ahkam. Uh, Ashar, what would you say? So you have various uh, shuru that is there. That, uh, Bassam, maybe for the You have Sheikh uh, Bassam, you have some other shuru concerned that uh, you have uh, Sheikh uh, Najmi as a nice uh, shar in about yeah. four volumes, that's yeah. nice uh, type of. Uh, also, you have uh, Salam al-Sheikh from Yemen, yeah. but they are more detailed. Yeah. You understand? So you have uh, different, you have uh, Sheikh uh, Abdullah Fawzan. Yeah. Now, his books are very good. Yeah. Uh, you have also uh, Sheikh uh, Fawzan, Saleh Fawzan also. Yeah. So you find uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Ar-Raji. You understand? So you have various of the contemporaries that you can use. Yeah. Uh, then you have those more detailed. You have the Ibn Mulak, you have one that goes into over 10 volumes. 10 volumes on and on this. Ahkam. Okay. Yes, and you have, so you have various degrees. Yeah. Yes, and but a contemporary one that uh, uh, of contemporary concern is you have Ibn Uthaymin, yeah. uh, the likes of uh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al Raji, Sheikh uh, Fawzan, Sheikh, uh, yeah, those ones. You can but also Bassam. Yeah. You can work with those. Work with those. Okay, Umdat al Ahkam, that's the second one on, on this first one on Ahadith al Ahkam. And then? Then the next level concerned that, 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 that is traditionally out there. They said, okay, the person go to Balugul Maram yeah. by Ibn Hajar Rahimahullah. Yeah. And the various explanations that are there. So you have uh, Subul Salam, you have uh, La Badl, uh, uh, the first explanation concerning Badul Munir, I think Badul uh, Badl Tamam, or that may Badl Tamam was the first explanation of that book okay. by Al Maghribi. Ibn uh, Hajar Salam. Subul Salam is like. Uh, uh, an abridgment of that book with some addition okay. where uh, Subul Salam uh, as Sanani he added the aqwal of the ulama of the Zaydiya. Okay. You understand? Uh, so even some that mentioned that the original book, Badr Tamam, is a better explanation. Is than, it available as well? That it's book available. Now. Yeah, it's all now. the books that were mentioned are all books that all are available. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so that, you know, and then you have others who have done yes, and uh, works on that book. So you have many, especially of contemporary time, yeah. who have you know, a lot of emphasis concerning. Uh, the book uh, Bulugul Maram. Okay. Aye. Then also the person about correct uh, checking of Bulugul Maram. Because you have also hadith that said that uh, with Bulugul Maram, like Ibn Hajar Rahimullah also passes judgments on the hadith. Yeah. But sometimes some of those judgments, uh, you understand, that's his, his judgment, his conclusion. Yeah. But it may be others may have a different opinion. So, so you still need to uh, tahqiq on that, tahqiq, tahqiq, of it, a proper tahqiq, tahqiq on it as well. Aye. And again, we'll leave that for another lesson, yeah, another subject. Like, yeah, tabaat and stuff like that is important. Like, Getting the right. I remember when I was in the jam, every time you go to the book fair, it's like, what tabaat have you got? Have you got this tabaat? Have you got that tabaat? Yeah, and it's, it's as much about the print as it is about the book as well. Yeah, well. Isn't it? Uh, hey, so, hey, so that's concerning. So those things, the person has to be mindful concerning the type of print and also the layout. And so different things regarding said that's that. No, Our next topic. topic. Okay. okay. Just quickly rushing through, we've done, uh, these are two books and I had yeah, the person will go to him and then after the Buddha person can somewhat then try to enter the Qutbah uh, uh, Asliya. Yeah. It was concerning that, you know, we'll say Asliya concerning Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, uh, those type of book. Yeah. So either person can start with either the Muqtasarat, so you have mere, various Muqtasarat of Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. You understand? So to either person, if you have a teacher, he can go directly into Bukhari, if he has a teacher. Yeah. You understand? Uh, in the West... Yeah. In the West, maybe appropriate concerning in the West that more concerning muqtasarat by way of teaching. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Uh, the general public are the, the tulab in the ma'a, so the muqtasarat of those books, yeah. with, uh, and you just use concerning the, the uh, and you just, hey, so using the muqtasarat that is available regarding al Bukhari Muslim. Uh, then also you have Abu Dawood, you have their, each book of their shuru, yeah. 
Yeah. You understand? So having a shot of each of those books. Yeah. An explanation. For An explanation. It's a more, more so three explanation. Yeah. What's, What's that statement concerning Fat al Bari? La so that's the hadith, but they apply it to, and the scholars yes. of hadith are speaking about. Give us some, elucidate that for yes. us. As a al Shawkani, al Sanhani, I think Shawkani, or Haimullah, one of the ulama of Yemen in the 12th century, that uh, he has many works concerning hadith. Yeah. And uh, he was, uh, so uh, he mentioned that Shawkani explained the book that we, uh, so he was asked to explain, uh, ex sorry, he was asked to explain. Uh, Sai Bukhari, yeah. but him kind of somewhat, he can somewhat kind of uh, mention concerns, you know, La Fat Bada Hijra or uh, La Hijra or La Hijra Bada Al Fat, yeah. or that concerns, you know, that uh, you understand what was done by Ibn Hajar Al Fat, then there's no need for anything else. There's no need for anything else. And that was his opinion. That's his opinion, yeah. yeah and so he means that what was done by Ibn Hajar, Fat Al Bari, yeah. they explain Sai Bukhari. That was sufficient. Yeah, and as you said in an encyclopedia, and that's, and that's an encyclopedia of yeah. Islam, not just in other yeah. words, yeah, concerning that uh, of. The explanation of uh, Bukhari, yes, kind of somewhat goes into various, because uh, something to be mindful of concerning, for example, Sai Bukhari, yeah. that uh, Al Kutubul uh, Al Hadith, they have different uh, method of how they compile their book. Yeah. So Bukhari is con concerned to be of a Muslim, Jawamah. Yeah. Jawamah in the Muslim Al Hadith, they mean concerned that that particular book, it consists of seven to eight science. Yeah. All the subjects, basically. And everything is covered, so it comes concerned, Aqeedah will be covered. Yeah. Also, Ahkam. Yeah. Raqaiq, yeah. uh, also Tafsir, yeah. Nam, also Al Manaqib, concerning yeah. no, uh, uh, a Sira yeah. or Magazi, yeah. right? And uh, Raqaiq. So all those stuff is within the books of? Of, that, so of, of, of Jawama. Jawama. Yeah. We find that, for example, books of As Sunan, which is Abu Dawood, Nasahi, and the likes, they mainly concern matters regarding Ahkam. Ahkam. Okay. No, you won't find Tafsir in their books. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Aqeedah would not be the main topic of their book. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important so, to understand so as well. Understand that those books have different yeah. uh, approach regarding their books yeah. and aims. Also, with regards to Bukhari, that statement that's mentioned, Asah al Kitab, Bad Kitab Allah, elucidate what does it mean? Yeah, the, the most authentic book after. No, regarding the concern, yeah, concerning that the books of Hadith are on different level of, of authenticity. Yeah. You understand? So, some of the ulama of Hadith, that when they uh, compile their book, that they add certain criteria that they worked with. Yeah. You understand? Regarding the layout of their book and also regarding the level of authenticity of their book. Yeah. So Bukhari and Muslim and others that uh, would be more renowned concerning Bukhari and Muslim that they made as a criteria for their book is that, uh, of the condition is that, what we collect in our book as a hadith that they are all authentic, yeah. nothing weak. Yeah. And also to, have a IS, to the highest standard. Yeah. You understand? Regarding Rijal bin Afda, more uh, highest standard or level. So that was of the criteria of their book. Yeah. Even though they didn't, that's also it is so that's of, of the criteria of their book is that everything we call, uh, uh, put in this book regarding a hadith and nabawiyah that they are authentic. No. You understand? So, uh, so based upon this, that uh, they are referred to as the Bukhara's most authentic book because, yes, he can somewhat in most that he fulfilled that criteria. Yeah. You understand? So compared to all the books of hadith that we have, it's the most authentic. Yeah. And because it only stays apart from the chapter headings, it's yeah, so, only yeah, a I hadith. Have, yeah. So you have chapter in Bukhari, you have chapter heading also, some, or sometimes mentioned uh, some of the athar of the Sahaba. It's mentioned as it's well. mentioned, you understand? Okay. So said, those are not per se of his criteria. Yeah. You understand? It's more a hadith and nabawiyah that it's concern is, uh, is the criteria. Uh, so you find, and also Imam Muslim also made the same uh, criteria of his book that everything that I collect uh, as the main part of his book, because his book is in two parts. Yeah. yeah, the Muqaddim of Ibn Muslim, which is not according to that criteria. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he mentioned things of Ilm al Yeah. Yeah, and so, so of the early books that discuss about some aspect of Mustal al Hadith is the book of Imam Muslim. Imam Muslim, in his introduction. And it's in the introduction, so it gives some insight concerning some of the masail or matters relating to Ilm al Hadith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some, some, some and also Imam Tirmidhi mentioned something on Ilal or not. Is that in his book yeah, or separate? Yeah, Imam al Tirmidhi at the end of his book. At the end of his book he yeah, mentioned so, stuff. And it's so even important science concerning Ilm al-Hadith, concerning Ilm al-Ilal. Yeah. Especially, so, I'll uh, uh, end with that, uh, if anything. But before it says, so, uh, so Bukhara Muslim, they kind of somewhat stand apart because that they made as a criteria, or put as a criteria, that everything we collect as regarding a hadith and nabawiyah, that they are authentic. Yeah. You understand? You might find a few little, you understand, here that may be under discussion, but that was a criteria. And based upon that, they become, they compare to all the books of Hadith, they're the most authentic. The most authentic. Yeah. You understand? So you have other books that stipulate quite authenticity. So you have Ibn Hibban, yeah. uh, we have uh, Al Mustadrak, Al Hakim, uh, we have uh, Adiyah al Maqdisi uh, in his book, uh, 
and they have a few others also who stipulate that criteria somewhat, but they're not to the extent of Bukhari Muslim. Yeah. You understand? So that's concerning why those books are somewhat, uh, can somewhat set themselves apart compared to other books. Yeah. Uh, so that's concerned that matter. Okay, so what the, the main books of Hadith plus one explanation for each at least. Fat al-Bari obviously is a must. If a person that's student, mutakadim, a student, who, you understand? So you have in most of those books, like Bukhari, the Muslim, explanation of various levels. Yeah. You understand? So you have, for example, Suyuti. Yeah. Now, uh, you can somewhat try to make it simplistic. Can I somewhat, you have like, you know, give an explanation. I was said, let me say that explanation mentioned as Taliqat. On, which is um, on, on Kutubu Sitta. On Kutubu Sitta, no. Yeah, and all of them, that is the intention. Kutubu Sitta and Muatta. And Muatta. He's yeah, got so, a Taliq on all three. Yeah, he's got a Taliq on all those books. Printed and published. And now. most of them are in print now. Most of them are, so you have Bukhari, is in print. Uh, Muslim in print. Uh, so you find most of those books that, but uh, so you can somewhat, can somewhat, and said, just a small notes on those books. So we need to, inshallah, add to the library in the section of hadith, inshallah. <coughs> so we're looking for people that want to contribute, inshallah. inshallah. Hey, so that's the thing, but uh, the main thing, so said in uh, those books of hadith, the person, a book that is somewhat muqtasar concerned, taliqat, not very detailed. Yeah. And then you have a book that may be a little more detailed, and then you have the one that goes into Mosuat. Mosuat, yeah. yeah. So they're like encyclopedias. Yeah, it's like, uh, that type, uh, those type of book that go more, yeah. you understand? But that's for the higher level, student. Yeah. Uh, 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 advice to a student of Hadith. After that. And, and uh, just a quick topic on the different schools as it pertains to, uh, I guess, I mean, we said at the beginning I want to speak about two things, I guess. Advice, no, three things to close with, inshallah. Advice to a student who wants to study hadith. The issue of Jarwa Ta'adil, is it only for the, is it ended with Al-Murrijal of Qutb Sitta and the Tadween of the books of Jarwa Ta'adil? Or do, do you apply the same science today? You can answer that if you don't want to. The third one is going to be, what was the third topic again? The ulama of hadith. The ulama of, oh, Ahl al-Hadith as opposed to the, the fuqaha as a, you know, i.e. The, the schools, i.e. because we have, we, we speak about, for example, why I'm mentioning this, because now, obviously, we say, uh, you know, this masjid is masjid Ahl al-Hadith. Okay. All right. What does that actually mean when you say these are Ahl al-Hadith, as okay. a laqab, as a term, what does it mean? We say the Ahl al-Hadith, you okay. see what I mean? So that's also, I think, important. So when someone hears it, he understands what it means, the significance, importance. Okay. So the first was... Uh... Advice to a student. Yes, the advice concerning a uh, person concerning Imam Hadid that uh, one concerning any advice to any student regarding Al Ikhlas and Niyyah. No. So, regarding concerning a person who wants to uh, have a passion towards studying of Hadith, that uh, in anything, on any of the signs of Islam, that a general thing the person should have Al Ikhlas. Yeah. And also Al Azima. The person also he has this strong will that he, have, he wants to study the science. Yeah. Because Hadith, as you can see, it takes a lot of effort. Yeah. You understand? So, the person has to have that strong will that uh, he wants to embark on this uh, path of studying of hadith. Nam, uh, and uh, he would see it through to the end. Mm. You understand? So he has to see it through to the end. Uh, and also kind of somewhat stick to the path of the ulama uh, as laid down in their books. Yeah. You understand? Uh, also that the person regarding Imam hadith, that finding a teacher, a good teacher to study with. And I said that anyone, yeah, so, which is finding a teacher to help to guide you through the books to be studied. I will mention some of the books to be said as the person of a, a system as to what to be studied. Mm. And that requires another you know, teacher uh, and uh, the likes. But also what we live in Hadith, it requires great effort. Mm. You understand? Because each of the same, so it requires a lot of effort. And a person will be willing to make those efforts. And uh, with Ilm al Hadith, with Ilm al Hadith, it does come with a cost financially. Because mm. the books of Hadith, they're somewhat, they're many. So the person of understand to know that uh, he has to be prepared to, to spend when needed. On books and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, books. And books. Uh, yeah. Okay. And you don't think they can make do with PDF downloads? Uh, uh, <laughs> doesn't work with Ilm al Hadith. Doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Ilm al Hadith is different. Yeah. What yeah. we need to do as well in the future is have a, in the Maktaba series, but looking yeah. at. Because PDF sometimes are not as apt, you understand? Yes, so the person, because for some time I use a PDF, but something on a reference is page. 300 yeah. and to find that page and they have to call back again then it becomes it's not it's, it's not, not it's not practical yeah, it's not practical it's not you understand practical. you go back and forth yeah. it becomes difficult we need someone on here that can do maktab <laughs> shamala and show how that's used today hey. because it's used quite a lot okay that's advice to a student of knowledge the next one is the issue of 
uh, ahl al-hadith what does it mean when we say ahl al-hadith what does that mean in terms of the laqab or that overused yeah, or the laqab concerning ahl al-hadith yeah. can we look at two ways yeah. uh, maybe a third way you have uh, ahl al-hadith which concerning that uh, sinai regarding concerning ahl al-hadith people who are people of hadith who study the science hmm. so also the ulama of hadith they are considered to be ahl al-hadith because of them being a part of that science yeah. a person being attached to that science may not be so you have the person, it means that he somewhat is involved in the science of hadith yeah. and his related subjects. Nam. Uh, then you have al hadith uh, by way of uh, al intisab, yeah. by way of concern al hadith in the sense of the person upon the way of the people of hadith where that hadith is given precedent over, over the call of men. Yeah. You understand? So the person well, that's so you follow and your intention is to follow hadith. Uh, so intisab regarding matters relating to fiqh, you give precedent to hadith over that of men. And also regarding Ali Hadith, regarding uh, regarding concerning your man and regarding Talaq al Deen, regarding matters concerning Aqidah. Yeah. So it's an intisab regarding that. You want to follow the way of Hadith and say Hadith is giving precedent over everything. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So the person doesn't have to be a student of Hadith to be a part of that. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So anyone who said to be of Ali Sunnah, then that's Ahl Hadith. Ahl hadith. Yeah, because so you're part of the Sunnah. Yes, yeah, so synonymous. Yeah. Yeah. Concerning Ahl Sunnah, Ahl where precedent is given to Hadith. Yeah. Nam. Uh, which is al ittiba yeah. uh, and then you have concerning what is now what we find the third now era concerning al hadith where it becomes concerning that it is a name used regarding uh, jamiyat okay you understand it is used by is that name used for by islamic organizations yeah. you understand so that's just organizations that's just an organization that's an organization who have taken on that name yeah. you understand is that so is that that they have taken a name al hadith yeah. and use it yeah. uh, you are part of the organization if you are affiliated to them or have a membership. Yeah. You understand? So that's just for an organization basis. That, that's something separate. Yeah, yeah that's something separate. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's something separate. Okay, well, good point. And I guess the last one uh, is the science of Jarrah Ta'adil, Ilm al-Rajal. For example, do we apply it today? So we see somebody, for example, and we just know that they Okay, do we say, okay, that person is thiqa, or that person is matruq, that person is, you know, do we, do we use that terminology as it's understood according to the definition of Ilm al-Rajal or that's for the science and even if you use it, it doesn't have the same implications, i.e. rulings? That's the question, I guess. Hey, so regarding concerning the term uh, or the science of Ilm al-Rajal, Jarrah Ta'adil, so Jarrah Ta'adil is concerning the Amar of the man yuqbal right to who a man yurad. It's concerned to know who is those persons that you can accept is narrations and the one that you reject is narration. Yeah. That's the origin of that science. To yeah. critique concerning our reward. Yeah. But within the science it have certain dawab, it has certain rules uh, and guidelines that one have to follow in applying that science. Yeah. So originates apply regarding our reward. Yeah. You understand? But uh, regarding concerning uh, and uh, narrators of, of hadith, hadith and asar specifically and athar, so yeah. the science is more so for that purpose yeah. initially but you find aspect concerning but to critique a narrator you saw you have certain guidelines that are followed yeah. and principle a person have to follow right so those principles some of those principles for example can you accept a narration from a person who's from Ali Bida? Yeah. you understand that's concerning of all concerning narrators yeah. this person Fulan or Rafidi yeah. Can we accept his narration? Yeah. You understand? So, at, at times, a person narration is rejected because of having certain, of, a certain type of, certain degree of bidah. Yeah. You understand? So you have certain principles that are to be followed. Yeah. But after time, you find people that are khariji, qadri, and the narrations are accepted. Yeah. You understand? So, you have certain guidelines that are followed. So the thing that comes from the principles are there, that you might find that in our time, one, you find the ulama who special hadith, they still follow Follow that principle regarding checking of hadith. Takri, you see Sheikh Albani, critique him, and yeah. people of his likes. So it is still alive in that sense, the traditional yeah. sense. But also, some of his principles are used regarding the ulama, not putting you understand, regarding critiquing of individual, regarding are those people suitable enough, suitable for us to study with them and to take their knowledge. views, their yeah. knowledge. Yeah. So, yes, and so I said, some of those rules can be applied by people who understand well the origin the original science and its principle yeah you understand? students of hadith people people, people hadith, hadith people, people hadith, understand? Yeah. for example you don't find the likes of example sheikh fozan talk about critiquing people is based upon ilm jarrah tadid he doesn't use that term because yeah. critiquing a person today in today's time contemporary time in reality 
is kind of somewhat a judgment whether the person from Ali Bido or not. Yeah. You understand? So that sign in that sense is concerning that it's a, it's it's a ruling that any alim can do is a mujtahid can pass. Yeah. It's not. It doesn't not, not particular to Ali hadith, hadith anymore. You understand? So it's concerning. So, 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 so the rule concerning something a person or that acts in a bidah, it goes back to a person the alim. Who's mutakhassis? Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Not necessarily he has to be a muhaddis. Yeah. And a lay person definitely can't do it. A lay person is have nothing to do with it. it full stop anyway. You understand? You understand? Yeah. Uh, and also for a lay person, you understand, not to overly get involved in those areas that he doesn't understand the full, yeah. you understand, procedures that are followed. Yeah. You understand? So but we said the science still can be used, we said aspect of its principle can be used, yeah. but by the people who are specialists in that field. Yeah. But uh so that's concerning that matter. And not, or there's a lot of them, but they're not, so yeah, not every scholar either, like you mentioned. Aims that every scholar, you understand, so concerning judgment regarding a person being concerning matters, we said concern matters concerning passing judgment and a person being from Ali Bida yeah. or Al Fisk or Al Kufr. That is for ulama, specific ulama. Yeah. You understand? That's concerning people are the Qudat. Yeah. You understand? Who can look at judges. a person's case and judges who can look and make that judgment yeah. because their people are Qudat, they're judges yeah. who specialize in Sharia. You understand? Uh, and a judge sometimes maybe a muhaddis and a faqih. Yeah. You understand? Uh, and a person who's a mufti. That's yeah. their call. Yeah. You understand? Concerning a person concerned. So really it goes back to those people who are the, the mufti or the qudat. Yeah. They're the best person to make that call because it becomes mundabit. Yeah. You understand? Where the case, this person put him to the mufti or to the judge and he will judge. Yeah. When we go to everyone doing it, sometimes it becomes, it becomes a confusion. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's concerning that matter. Inshallah, hopefully, uh, a couple of weeks or so, you come back and we'll talk about tabaat, inshallah, of the books of hadith specifically. Yeah. And maybe we we'll limit it to this kutub sitta just so people get a taste. I'm going to try to bring if I can find all who can bring them so people can have an idea what they look like. Okay, that'll be yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, talking about Tabat, they will still understand unless maybe they have something to, to, to see, eh, to visualize. Okay, so we see, okay, and work that out, inshallah. I'll, inshallah, we'll hold uh, Shaykh Omar Jamaican to that. <laughs> inshallah. Barakal <laughs> Fikum, Jazakal Akim for. Uh, enlightening us and giving us this uh, beneficial knowledge on, on hadith. So our students who are uh, thinking of applying for the Jamia, uh, a lot of the students that are only going to Sharia I've noticed. Every student I've met that said, well, now he says I'm going to Sharia, Sharia. Uh, don't neglect Kulit al-Hadith. It's still from the most important of the Kuliyat, as you've seen, inshallah, from this session. And inshallah, thank you very much. Barakal fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.